all right, record on this computer. Joe, we are recording, man. Tell me everything, bro. Tell me everything. Is it a Silverado? Is it gray? Is it black? Why did <laughs> you wash it? What happened? Uh, that's funny. Uh, no, I just, you know, it, every time you go wash your truck, it always rains. Joe, we're getting Fucking a little bit of an echo on you. Echo, buddy. man. Sorry, hang on. Not that we don't want to hear you four or five times every time you speak, but damn, dude. <laughs> <laughs> hang on. So guys, what this is, is this is, uh, this is our head moderator, Joe Kelly, the creator of the Accelerator course, for those who don't know. Uh, we like to just open this up to a Q&A, man. So if you guys have any questions, definitely post them on the YouTube channel. We'll answer them live uh, as this is live. Uh, and then uh, for any members, you know, post them in the webinars channel right now and we will answer your questions. And if you have no questions, then this will just become a talk show and we'll talk about what we had for dinner. Yeah, so. It's just going to be a podcast for the next 45 minutes. So how do you feel about millennials? <laughs> right, right. Oh man. The selfie oh, man. generation. Let's see if we got anything on the old YouTube. Yep. Oh man, that's an interesting place. Hello from Compton, Arkansas. Yo. What? That's a place? That's Compton, a place? Arkansas? Holy shit, I thought he meant Compton in LA. That's like, that's like the redneck hood. That's Is like... <laughs> oh. That's like... <laughs> What's up, brother? Dude, <laughs> What's up, man? Compton in the house. Compton. Except when they say it, they're like, Compton. <laughs> yes, not to be confused Campton. with Ice Cube's Compton. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, that's funny. Faye, you got people on YouTube that are trying to hit, up, hit you up in your DMs. They're trying to slide in your DMs. So. Oh, man, see, you found out she was a girl. You found out she got money, and this is what yeah. happens, bro. Everybody wants to show Found a girl that got money. All of a sudden, she boop. I, I tried, man. She shot me down already, but it is what it is. <laughs> What's that rap song? I N D E P. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's a blast from the past. <laughs> that was like what, two thousand three? That's so funny. Oh that yeah, I funny. forgot. You're you're Joe's. You're Joe's side chick, right? <laughs> Oh man, I say that with love. You would be the main chick, Faye, but you got to get the wife out of the picture first, and then you'll become the main chick. You're like, you're like the, um, you're like the farmer pump that's that's creeping up, and you know he's gonna get into it and replace the former hot chick with a new hot chick. But you're almost there. It's just one divorce away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I'd I'd be I'd be broke if I ever got divorced. <laughs> Dude, I'm gonna tell you right now. I'd be ruined, bro. It's so funny, man. So I, I've always like my parents. So I grew up um, very middle class, right? Like very middle class, bro. Dude, I swear to God, living in LA, all my parents' friends were mega, mega wealthy. Dude, I'm talking about literally some were billionaires, and every single one of them that had money, and I'm talking about money, money. Dude, they mm -hmm. said, bro, never get married it is the single financial dumbest decision you because <laughs> you know all the motherfuckers have been through two and three divorces already. oh yeah 100 percent. my all dad's right, so, been divorced oh, twice sorry. dude and he's like never again bro <laughs> nope he's like, uh, <laughs> does a stop loss order always fill david on youtube asks the answer to that is no um chicago had a He's had a story about this. You can ask him in in his DMs or whatever, but uh, I believe it's Arca. Most stops get routed through Arca, and Arca has a slippage number. So let's say it becomes like a super illiquid ticker, and um, <laughs> let's say you set a stop at five, the stop triggers, but the next closest ask is five sixty like you're trying to cover, right? You're trying to exit. Uh, and the next closest ask is 560. And then it just keeps skipping up 566, 650. And it just keeps going. I believe that that band, it's like a, it's a slippage band. I don't know the exact terminology for it. But I think with ARCA, it's more than, if there's more than 50 cents deficit, uh slippage from your stop that you set so let's say you set a hard stop at five it breaks five and screams all the way to 560 with no other prints like it just goes five and then boop 560 Good, nobody's sweet. hitting the bids nobody's hitting anything it's just spreads wide out and it just skips right up then your uh your stop will be skipped 
um, and it'll just sit there until it gets back within the range or until you cancel your order and then get out. But all market makers reserve like this slippage factor to not execute orders within a certain range of blah, blah, freaking ask the broker. That's the short answer to that. There you go. Yeah. No, the stop order will not always fill. Yep. So that's where we got to. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's how to answer yeah, that. All right. Perfectly. Uh, the, we the took best, the scenic route. Yeah, we took the scenic route. Um, if you if you guys are using um, hard stops, guys, market hard stop always. It's going to yep. alleviate a lot of your stress. Um, again, this is not investment advice, but this is what we do. And yeah. I would recommend to do the exact same. Yeah, and for me, market, it's always a market stop. Yeah, it's, it's always a market stop, man, because then you're, then you're literally just going to know that you have a 99.99999 chance of getting filled. So if not 100. So last thing I want to do is walk out, get a fucking smoothie and come back and be like, wow, my stop limit didn't fill on this micro float. And now I'm down $7. And that's when you wish you use 50 shares and not 500 to 5,000. <laughs> uh, how did you adjust your strategies during this high volume COVID time? Uh, patience. That's it. I literally yeah. did. I, I'll never change my strategy, man. The strategy remains the same, bro. Outer lines, death candles, death lines. It's just a matter of patience right here is a test to patients. I would love to try BLIN today, but I'm not going to. Why would I do that? In this market, yeah. things are running. I'm going to wait till tomorrow, wait for a top to form or wait for something to happen. Like there's, there's no edge in my opinion right now. I swear like to God. Like SNDE right there. Wait until 350 breaks. Once 350 breaks, short pops. That was what we talked about. Yep, that was what yeah. we talked about. Nice. Ogen, Ogen wants 170 breaks, short pops. Dude, seriously. OBLG. That kind of looks day two-ish, but you know, once 350 broke, that's a wrap. You Joe, know, so how do, you, how do you feel about something that runs after hours? I actually have always kind of considered these day ones, even though they technically are right. day twos. I do too. I consider them a day one if it happens in after hours. Cause it's like, it, but, in my mind, it's like day hours. one. Right. Yeah. If there's any kind of run up, like 10% or more on like, day one. Yeah. Like even in the last mm -hmm. hour, dude, that's a, like, that's it's just like one. a little creep up then. Mm, yeah. No, that's kind of a day two in that situation. For sure. Yeah. I agree with you there. When day trading, do you guys have one or two favorite time frames in order to enter, follow or exit your positions? Uh, just three minutes for me all the time. I mean, I'll, ne I'll never change my time frame unless I'm like, oh, hey, Pumper just got in something. Okay, let me check the daily chart. Oh, it's shit? Yeah, I could have figured. And then back to a three minute. Like that's <laughs> it. <laughs> it's as simple as that. <laughs> oh, would you look at that? Okay, back. Ah, yeah. shocker. Yeah. Uh, me, it's just a daily. And then uh, since I mainly do big caps, it's a five minute chart because that's what a lot of other intraday big cap traders look at is a five minute. So I kind of, you know, I want to look at time frames that other people are looking at that way that, you know, we trade technical patterns. And so we want to see the same patterns that other people are seeing that way that they become self-fulfilling prophecies. <laughs> so yeah, only three minutes. Tom. I'm sorry. Faye. I didn't live up to phase expectations. <laughs> Faye's, Faye, uh, Faye, Faye's, Faye's different than any one of us, man. She's probably using like a six and a half minute chart. I'm telling you. <laughs> she got some secret like, shit, man. Yeah, I use a seven minute because the seven minute is an interval of uh, 14, which then if you multiply to 28, subtract three, that's 25. Add six, that's 31. Take one away, that's 30. I choose a seven and a half minute. That's just my preference. Dude, you guys are made for each other, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm voting for Faye, dude. Uh, Muhammad really asks, uh, what is the best pattern for day trading? My Any personal opinion. One that we teach, bro. First red day. Uh, yes, it, that's Joe's definite comfort zone right there. My the one that's going to make you the most money, it's going to be the first red day. For sure, especially if you yep. don't know jack shit. Yeah. Um, I would say, man, that, you know, anything that we teach, um, if we have legitimately made it one of these, like, let me pull it back up. If we have, yeah, if we, if we cat, if we, if we lock it down as an actual, 
as an actual strategy. Like an yeah. MIC proprietary yeah. training strategy. They're all yep. the best, dude. There's four or five other ones that we teach within these five, you know, so I would probably say there's probably like 10 total yeah. that we talk about, you know, in several of those, probably three or four, three of those are probably um, in big caps that add to that. And so, but a lot of these same strategies right here apply to big caps. So yep. it's, uh, you know, it, you know how the process goes, you know how we trade these patterns, then, I mean, you can walk into any market, almost any market besides like death line. That's probably not going to work for you in any market. Well, and guys, this is why this is why we literally are like screaming at the rooftops. If you know nothing about trading or you don't even want to commit to an annual membership or a lifetime yet, dude, get the accelerator course. We've talked yep. in this for eight hours. It took us six months to make on everything that's ever been taught in MIC. Like yep. this is MIC in a nutshell, dude. Seriously. Yeah, it's two years of content condensed down into eight hours. The most seven hours parts. and forty-five, whatever. Yeah, it's it's and it's all freshly recorded. Nothing, nothing regurgitated, nothing old. It's all that. So answer, what is the best pattern for day trading? I'm still. Anyone. I'm, yeah. Any of those could be good, but it just depends on small caps, large caps. You know, what, what is the situation here for large cap? Man, dude, to be honest with you, first red day is probably the strategy that applies in in a lot of markets. Yeah, Joe, that's probably, I mean, it depends on how you ask the question, right? If, sure, exactly. If, it's like, what's the best long pattern? Well, oh, 100%. that's yeah, yeah, a yeah. very different answer. If, what's if the best you, short? Uh. If you ask the question, what's the best pattern? I think they're all equally unbelievable. But if you want to ask like, hey, dude, I'm new. What's going to make me the most money and be the easiest to understand? Probably the first red day. Yeah, it is. the. It's like, you can't fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> you can't mess well, that up. Monkey could do your job literally. <laughs> right. <laughs> if you mess that, if you're like, if you mess up the first red day, you're just kind of like, all right, well, I'll be on the roof. That's when you go back to working at the Honda dealership. No, exactly. <laughs> but but my point is, uh, what we're saying, Hi, sir, guys, would you like a car wash today? <laughs> you couldn't nail the first red day, could you? <laughs> No, the, the, uh, yeah. the problem with the first red day, guys, there's only one problem is it's probably the most rare out of the place, but it's the easiest to understand. It's the most profitable, but man, it's, a, it comes, it's so dude, damn hard to get the borrows too, bro. It if is, it's a damn small hard. cap, if it's a small cap, the borrows are going to be so expensive. Um, there it's, it's just, yeah, I mean, I, it, it, that's why. You know, I loved the first red day and I still love the first red. I shouldn't say that in past tense. Um, I love first red day setups to a point where, you know, I got so tired of having to pay. Like that's the setup I really love that I can really put some pedal behind, like some metal to pedal to the metal situation. I yep. couldn't say that right. But it's like, that's the one that like, I can really put some conviction and some size behind. And the rest of the five, you know, I like them and I can trade them and I do trade them daily, but you know, I don't put size behind them. It's just, you know, I'm, I'm scalping in between here and there, just tinkering around until the next good first red day comes along. And then I'm like, yes. Well, and the reason and then why it's, guys, you know, it, to, yeah, to but the problem, so that's why I made, I was saying all that to say, that's why I made the switch to large caps. Cause there's no fucking borrow. Dude, there's 100%. no borrow fee. And I can also just trade it in the options and have an exponentially larger gain. Well, and the, um, the thing so, that I yeah. love about the first red day, which I want to kind of capitalize on what Joe just said, is I'll tell you this, man, it is probably the most psychological based strategy there is next mm -hmm. to low hanging fruit, but even low hanging fruit break a lot of the rules, man. First mm -hmm. red day, dude, it, it literally gives everyone from their grandma to the family dog a reason yep. to sell the stock that has been long for a multi-day runner. It it's finally, been a thing since yes. like Jesse Livermore. Like it's been a thing since Livermore days. Yeah. It's, it's just it's completely and total psychological. How we trade it, that's the proprietary part. Hey, Joe, I got a question for you. Do you like the, um, do you like the first red day more in big caps or small caps, bro? Because I technically like it more in big caps. I'm going to agree with you there because I think you get a better risk to reward. That's because, yes, right. because a real true 
first red day in small caps is, uh, bro, it's so few and far between. Really and is. and many of the times when it's first red day, shit's gapping down like 30%. And you're like, how in the fuck am I going to get a good risk out of that? Yeah, sometimes you, know, you just it's know just, it's going to go down, but you might be down a lot first, but you're just so convicted right. on it because of the psychology side of it. But again, man, sometimes I'll really fuck up an entry on a small cap first red day, but dude, on a big cap first red day, they mm -hmm. are, I swear to God, they're like 10,000 times easier. Yeah, I would agree with you. Like that Tesla trade that Alex made like 100K that one day on the first red day of Tesla, dude, yeah. it doesn't get more clear than that. All right, dude, for real. Do you place the stop loss after you place your trade or do you use a hot key uh, that comes with a stop loss? Um, um, I don't hate the idea of using a hot key to load the order, but I always do it manually, I'm you know, saying. but if, if you're somebody that likes to, you know, like if you hit F4, like it loads a stop order and all you have to do is change the price, you know, that, okay. To cut down on time. Uh, I could see that. For me, I just do it manually because I'm pretty fast at the old clicker. Yep. What about I? I know I know Tosh is the same way. So <laughs> the same way, <laughs> uh, let's see here. <laughs> and spin the wheel of fortune. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then it's like uh, bankrupt. Tried on being Fuck. fast. Let's see here. We're two pump chumps in tech markets looking a little double toppy just to ah, kind of get, look at the cues. I mean, take a look at the cues and tell me that Let's doesn't look, look double toppy. Cues. Bring on some cues. One sec. Detest this sucker. Let's see what the QQQ. Look at the daily. 15 year. Oh, hello. Zoom in. I mean, like, look, that looks pretty double toppy to me. That's if, a Dublin Toplin. Like, yeah, that, that level right there, man. So that would be the level to break, man. Cause this, <laughs> is, just, this is just a wick. This is panic. Like, obviously I put a resistance line there too, but this is what yep. I'm looking at. Yep. I always go where the base is pretty much. That's what she said. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That was inappropriate. <laughs> I don't think anything's inappropriate these days on these webinars, man. This is a talk show, bro. Uh, it was inappropriate. Joe, what do you oh, let's uh, see. What do you look Full at? Full disclosure, I'm short the cues. I'm short. See, he had an agenda the yeah. whole time. And there's now an agenda behind, behind that. What? Bro, really? I don't believe in the, you know, but I just think that here's the thesis and I'll just explain it. And I could be wrong. Yo, I could be wrong. The last webinar on the spy, bro. Yep. It totally yep. broke it and went, man. And it's there. And it's there. So I think just based on like Netflix's earnings being such a, like when tech rallied like on Monday, Netflix had zero follow through until late, late, late in the day. Like you see where it just yeah, tanked all the way down. And then, and then finally, I mean, just, and there's the earnings. And then yeah. next day, pretty much like a non event, just flat. <laughs> and then the next day after that, it jams from, from 495 up to try to break 500 and then sells right back off. And then it finally catches that rally into the close with the cues and, and now it's just been met with constant selling, just selling, 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 selling. And then today, Snap, you know, their earnings were, nobody was overly impressed. Yep. And, and so it's, I mean, it's gapped down a bunch. And so I just think personally, in my opinion, that tech is not living up in terms of earnings to the run up so far. So I took a small speculative position on some puts in the queues, you know, they, they won't expire until late August. Um, you know, small, small, little, little baby feeler. And if it breaks 270, if the queues break 270, I'll stop out and I'll probably lose about 250 bucks. And, but if we continue to sell off after more earnings, continue to come out like today after hours is Tesla.
And so if Tesla disappoints, which never does, never. but if they do, um, then the queues should have a pullback along with that. Uh, so it's really just kind of like a proxy thing. And I'm, I'm just, I'm just, it's, it's a speculative thing. I'm looking at the chart pattern and I'm going, okay. Uh, like it should have reclaimed when it went from, when the queues went from 260 jammed all the way to 270, it shouldn't have stuffed. Like you see that big run? That's a huge like, run. Dude. It's that a massive a run. Small run. Freaking massive run. And then it just sells hard. And I'm like, okay, all right. If there was a time to get going, that was the time to get going. However, when they did that massive run, you know, Netflix didn't follow the run. Everything else did that hadn't reported earnings. So Netflix didn't follow the run at all. Zoom followed. Uh, NVIDIA followed. Uh, Roku hey, followed. Let me stop like, you here for a second. I had a guy ask me the other day, he goes, what's the difference between a waterfall and a death candle? Hey, there's your waterfall. <laughs> <laughs> That's what a waterfall is. <laughs> I thought you were going to tell me some kind of like dad joke. What's the oh, difference shit. between a waterfall and a... <laughs> and so I was like, oh boy, here we go. This is going to be a good one. <laughs> Don't get this confused with what Austin was saying was a glacier fall or a geyser fall. <laughs> I, got a a I got a joke for you. I got a joke for you. What's the di what, what does... Um, <laughs> Sorry. What does Beyond Meat and a dildo have in common? Oh, God. Tell me. They're both meat replacements. Uh, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I just can't. I was going to say meatless, but... <laughs> I mean, <come> <laughs> oh. oh, shit. They, had, they were doing something. You want to know who told me that joke? I... My wife. I was gonna say, I was gonna say the old wife. the old ball and, and I was like, "What?" And oh man, she was cracking up, and I was like, "Cause she's not that funny. She's funny. She's fun to be around, but she's like, she doesn't like say like clever things, like funny clever things. Most most often she doesn't. Um, but the, all of a sudden she's got all these jokes, and I'm like, "Where the hell are you getting all these jokes from?" And <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, what the? F you're like, dude, you're like, my wife's not that funny. To yeah, quote, I'm like, to quote she's not Jerry that funny. Filler. And all of a sudden, she's busting out these <laughs> jokes. And I'm like, where are you getting this from? Dude, to quote Ben Stiller's dad, Jerry Stiller and the Heartbreak Kid, funny's a male gene, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that that was one of the funniest lines. Well, of course, she's a little manish. Funny. <laughs> oh, man. she. I was like, what did you say? Oh man! Oh my God! I'll tell you, funny is probably a male and female gene, but being a clown is a male gene. I actually think she used. Oh my gosh! I remember what she said. I relate it to the stock market because you know, beyond meat, everybody's going to understand that. But she actually said, "What does tofu and a dildo have in common?" And I was like, "Oh boy, what? Oh dear! <laughs> what does tofu and a dildo have in common?" Bro, no joke, no joke. You're going to die. So. I'm not a huge meat eater, but I'm not a vegetarian like most people think. Like, I eat a lot of meat, just not like Joe. With nobody would have guessed that if they saw your plate. No, one, nobody would have guessed that at if they the like restaurant my in yeah, Philly. Exactly. Like, dude, you looked like you'd killed the cow. Like, it was so bloody. It was like, what I remember is that night? <laughs> You're just so there, just like slopping your steak in this like blood, just this pool of blood, and you're just like. Bro, so I'm, I'm at the house the other night. My, my girl's in Cali for two weeks, and she mm -hmm. handles all the cooking. Man, I, I can't cook air, dude. Yeah, that's what they like, were saying was she's like a professional chef almost. Well, practically, man. Like, she actually wanted to go on, like, Iron Chef and shit like that. She's so good, but she's, a, she's actually an event planner. She does things like that, but she's oh, – okay. Like, dude, she's like a world star fucking chef. And, again, man, I can barely make cereal, dude. <laughs> and, and she, I can trade my ass off, but I can't make food. So she's been away, man. And I am so damn lazy. And I don't even know what to go get in a grocery store unless it's like a ready-made smoothie, right? So we had one thing, bro. We had one thing in the fridge. And she's big on that tofu shit. Oh, I boy. tried to make it the other night, dude. You oh. would have thought I was cooking the neighbor's cat. Dude, it was the most disgusting You're like, it thing meowed. I've... So, <laughs> What? It's flopping around like a fish. 
And I, and dude, I, I thought I the shit was soybeans. Bro, I cooked it. The dog wouldn't even eat it. I oh, man. I got a garbage shoot immediately. <laughs> The like, dog would like, puppy. Here you go. And he's like, oh. that's freaking funny. Uh, best indicator for day trading for shorting stock. Um, Define. Indicator. I'm going to say kind of. outside of a, a common indicator, you know, like RSI, MACD, stochastics, Fibonacci, stuff like that. Um, the easiest and simplest stuff is, or the top three is going to be VWAP, VWAP right here, this blue volume, line. and basic technical analysis. And, and I'm going to show exactly what Joe means in And this. the fourth one I'll add is time of day. Well, Joe, check, check this out, man. I'm going to include all four that you just talked about and why they're important in this exact example. So I traded this this morning. I've mm -hmm. been so mobile and I literally had to drive it to my mom. I totally forgot to save charts. Fuck, I should have saved them, but... I slammed this pop at VWAP because let's go through it. This is trading in the morning. In the first hour of the day, we are short sellers. That's where you have the edge, number one. Number two, I wanted volume into this VWAP pop and why? Because it's trading so below VWAP, all pre-market. It's not ping-ponging like me and Joe talk about. It's not bouncing off. If it gets to VWAP, that's what's considered almost the outer line of the morning. So I slammed this, I covered lows. And then I looked at the volume. So literally that's two out of three. Now we're three out of three. I looked at the volume and I said, dude, this volume's picking up and it's holding the support. I absolutely top tick this because there was a top right here. I waited for this and I would have scaled to the top. The mm -hmm. point is, is everything I did this morning related to the only four indicators you will ever need of what Joe just said. Yep. And it was as easy as a trade I've ever done. Dude, my favorite in this particular, like, just like we talked about is, is how far below VWAP it is. So that's my and, bread and butter, bro. That is, yeah. that is my bread and butter. <laughs> my favorite thing is like, obviously we'll scale it to pre-market highs. But for me, my favorite risk is kind of like that level right there. Like that little five, that the top of that like VWAP where it how starts to roll that, over. <laughs> you don't know how to do that? You're drawing on my charts. What the fuck? <laughs> Dude, don't go through my search history. <laughs> Holy shit. What the hell did you do that, dude? Here's Taj's number. Two, one. Oh my God. <laughs> His address is 965. I'm just kidding. <laughs> 965 Busty Lane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How did you do that, bro? What the hell? Uh, annotate. I didn't even know you could do that. On yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Well, shit, Joe, you just take it from here, bro. <laughs> right? Yeah. I can't yeah. control your screen. Joe, uh, you're, I can you're, just write on reason it. Why, the reason why I give the exact level that you just gave, bro, is because this is a line of consolidation. Yeah. And I like that the I was having a one-on-one a -on -one with, a, with a lifetime member and we talked about this exact pattern. I was like, That's bro, this is I my feel, bro. favorite. You just it. This is my favorite pattern right now. And the reason being is it's very psychological. If you think about this, VWAP turns very quickly, right? It yes. turns super fast. There's a all this, there's a it's like a roller coaster. Imagine and Michael Vick like, down the line. Yeah. <laughs> <the end zone. laughs> Where he catches the ball right here. Exactly. And it, it's like a roller coaster. You get that funny feeling. And imagine if you're long, like this indicates like most people are long from up here around five bucks. Yep. And so if they're up there around five bucks, that's where they're long from. And it has such a, a, an exaggerated sell off. So, so VWAP doesn't chase the price. If it chased the price, it would be doing the opposite, right? It would be doing, it would be doing this. It would have the steep decline, but then it would have been doing this. And that would have been a very different story. That would have been the situation very where, different story. where Tosh hit it. He's not putting a lot of size behind something like that because it still has the sell-off, but VWAP is like still hugging the price. So you can't risk VWAP in that particular case. It's probably going to touch it again. You have to risk above it. And so, so that's so the case like, where you're sitting there waiting for what Tosh talks about is outer lines at level at 460 right there. Yep. It, that's exactly right. So Joe, <laughs> so let's, ma sorry. let's make this, let's even explain it even simpler. 
because it's so under VWAP, guys, I am mm -hmm. using this as like the stop out point, right? So I'm scaling from VWAP up to there. Now, yep. like Joe said, oops, sorry. Like Joe said, if, if it's hugging VWAP, like literally VWAP is right there and it's opening on above or barely below VWAP and it doesn't have to make a long jump to VWAP, guess where I'm starting this scale? I'm not starting the scale at VWAP. I am starting to scale right where Joe placed that top. See how yep. it's almost, it, it's almost like two sides of the equation. It's like, if that it's prior under, resistance I'm going right up there. to this line. If it's on or above, I'm going to start at this line and now use up to here. Mm -hmm. That's how you scale in the morning. Yep. If VWAP hugs the price and you're a short seller, that's the choice of outer levels. Yes, correct. And then if VWAP is extremely far away from the price, which indicates that uh, nobody's chasing with size down here. All the size remains up here in this big clusterfuck. And <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> like that's where everybody stays. That dude, the VWAP hug, people need to learn how to use VWAP. Most people think that it just is like, it's an over-under. Yeah, it's an over-under situation. I literally, dude, that phrasing pisses me off well it's like it's every time i hear question. over under i'm like especially from kind of some kind of chat room guru what that means is basically i'm taking a position but i have no fucking faith that it's gonna hold so yeah but so why even tell the room that you're in the position if that's, you have no correct. faith in it right why are you misleading people into thinking oh you know i'm gonna give it an over under situation over under five fuck that if you and have a real mind of where you want to stop out, and here's then the thing. say it. If this was a true over and under as so simplic, you know, like yeah. simply put, then this should have gone. Right. This should have fucking broken out. It's such a 50-50 situation. It's a way to say something and never truly be wrong. It's yeah, always yeah, yeah, yeah. an out. There's no accountability with it. Yeah, oh, there's, it's always an out. And it, if an you out. bring that into your trading and you are not disciplined and there's always an out, you will, you will hold on to some shit. All so, of a sudden you're going to be stuck. So Joe, check this out. If you guys are like, Oh, cause you know, general outer lines, uh, unfortunately, um, before we got really good at explaining it was kind of a general concept, right? Like just hit outer lines. Well, dude, it's indicative on how big's the sell off. Dude, if it's this far down under VWAP and it's opening down here or even coming down here, that's the start of the outer line, bro. Because Real, the sell-off yeah. is so hard. If it is opening on VWAP or playing ping pong, there's your outer line, bro. Yep. There, it's, it's two ways to look at it. It's, it's predicated on where in relation to VWAP there is and how much volume. As you can see, a ton more volume came in here, so it tried <laughs> – but again, it was still so under view up and so oversold from pre-market that it couldn't even make it up here. And yep. again, this was the start of the scale point. If it did, if it did catch serious volume, which it did. So mm -hmm. you start scaling here. And unfortunately, I only got a starter on that. But, <laughs> but, let's, uh, what were the other four that ran today? Uh, let's take a look, Joe. Uh, let's see. I think we had OBLG. Oh, Ogen. Dude, Ogen. Check this out. Check this out, dude. This is exactly what we were just talking about. Guess where you hit Ogen. Not anywhere near here. It's opening at pre. It's opening at VWAP and it's yep. hugging at pre-market outer lines. Yep. It, it, look at the VWAP. It, this is the big difference here. Is it's a rate of change situation. Imagine like Bao always uses that roller coaster analogy or turning a corner. Yep. Like if you have to turn the corner super fast, your car is going to roll. You're going to tumble. You're going to crash and burn. Right. Yep. And so it's the same situation in 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 um in small caps if pre-market this has always been my rule and it's my rule for big caps too it works in big caps as well if if all of a sudden vwap is like this like look how flat that is i mean okay it's a downtrend but that's pretty much fucking flat yo like, i don't even look at that as a downtrend bro seriously I, there are so many screws yeah it's just market. consolidation dude i literally look at that as a launch point yep now, and I wouldn't even, I would have still chosen outer lines in this case, even if we had opened down here because of how flat VWAP was. And it simply just means that we touched, we came back, we're opening down here. So that means we're probably going to touch again. So it's an outer line situation almost every time. And the only time you try those inner lines 
I was on something like OBL, OB, OBLG, uh, OBLG, OBLG, Let's see. where like, look at the contrast of VWAP there. Look Seriously, at the difference. Dude, like, look at the difference. Price accelerates away from VWAP. VWAP stays very far away. The price never touches it. And yeah, that's the fucking, that's the money pattern right there to be shorting it at the open. If you're so, okay, let's go back to that guy's question. What's my favorite day trading pattern? If I had to pick one to this do- This is my intraday every, pattern. Yes, yes, that's exactly what I was about to say. If I had to pick a chart that this is the setup I looked for every single day, it would be this setup. And Dude. I wouldn't do a single damn thing until I saw this setup. And if I didn't see this setup, I'd go do some other shit instead of sitting around trying to fuck around picking a stock to short. In my opinion, man, this is the number one account builder for a starter. Yeah. Short. Yeah. The broken day one so heavily. I mean, dude, this is the borrows are usually cheap. Like, Bro, this, yeah, yeah. The borrow is usually cheap because people are like forgetting about it until it peaks up interest. Because here's the yep. thing. A lot of the times this does just bleed off and you don't get a pop. You don't get a move and you can't chase that shit. Yep. Dude, 100%. this is, this has been such a good lesson. We could have literally charged for this webinar. Like, <laughs> like we just gave away gold, man. <laughs> How do we pick stocks to trade every day? Uh, well, we just look at the top percent gainers. It's, you know, that's, I, I hate to say it, but those rooms that pump to you that you need their scanner settings is oh. hocus pocus, man. Yeah. Don't follow that stuff. You don't need to know that stuff. You, you don't need to. Salesman, man. Yeah, exactly. It's like, that's not oil leaking. That's sweat from all the horsepower. No, that is fucking sales techniques. Okay. Here's so, rust proofing for you. Well, what's yeah. rust proofing? No, you need it. You need it. Here's blinker fluid. Make sure you add it every three months. Here's like <laughs> it. Here's, here's vitamin D with your car. Like what? <laughs> Dude, what? Sunscreen? I'm buying Dude, a car here. Like, yeah, exactly. I, I'm just like, you don't need scanner settings. That, there's no reason to do it. Just look at the top percent. If you're going to trade small caps, just look at top percent gainers. Look at the top stuff that's gainer. gapping up. And let's not overlook the fact that if you are a part of the MIC, you never need to look for a stock again. We cover it. Yeah, in the you don't even need a scanner. Dow scans. Yeah, you don't even need a scanner. You get Alex's watch lists, which are fucking $200 a month worth within themselves. Yeah, literally. Um, I mean, to get a watch list from somebody that's win rate is like 90%, you know. Dude, yeah. Cl uh, Clark, I would have done some nasty shit back in the day when MIC wasn't a thing to get an AT09 watch list. Like yeah. I would have done some nasty dark back alley shit. Like I would have done it. <laughs> just, and, and let me I'm tell you something, guys, it. he did it. <laughs> He's not talking about hypothetical. He did that shit. We made him. We got videotape. How do you think I became head mod? <laughs> More like the mod game. <laughs> I was just moderator for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> then we met. He's now head mod for a reason, bro. <laughs> oh, man. That's too funny. Oh, that's too funny. funny. <clears throat> All right. Let's see. What do we yep, got? Any more, uh, let's see. Can you, oh, MTP. Can you analyze MTP from yesterday? Oh, we had somebody mention MXC too. I don't, oh, MXC. You know what? Let's I know a lot of people were. Just because it was today. Let's just do this right now just because it's, it's mm. literally going on. Whoa. That's nasty, man. It's just, like, so if I were to attack this in the, I'm goddamn, this is just such hindsight. And I hate to be this guy. I really hate to be this guy because I don't know how I would have truly attacked this. So I'm just going to go off on a limb and say the fact that it's such a multi, like it's an after hours mover and then it becomes a pre-market mover. And so on the short side, dude, the only level I see is a short under that line right there. Yeah, right. Once that big. breaks, it's truly broken. Until then, and doesn't MXC have like an 800,000 share float? Dude, they've got something. They're crazy, man. Yeah, they're like, dude, they burn people today for hundreds of Gs, man. This Bro, is like it's like, float. I just, got a hold of this. yeah, I, the moment I would have seen an 800, 800,000 share float, I would have stopped. I would have not even fucking touched it just to like, I mean, that's part of the rules. That's part of what we teach. So let me give you guys a really cool tip. So I didn't trade this today and I'll show you why. OBLG, let's go give back to the tip. basics. Give let's me go your back tip. To the basics. Tell me your tip. I'm going to give you a tip. Give me Not that like tip. Not Joe gives a tip, but oh, I'm going to okay. give a tip. All right. <laughs> so right here. He gives guys, the base. I give the tip. <laughs> what do you, yeah, exactly. 
What do you notice, dude? What do you notice on this? This is a downtrender. Even DWAP yep. is downtrending. What the fuck? It makes an notice? easy, obvious short on OBLG. MXC, dude. I don't know whether to reach around or prepare for something <laughs> or tuck else. It from the back? Yeah, I Bro, don't know what to do. Not only is this, fuck the open, I'm just trying to do pre market. Not only is this through VWAP, back through VWAP, through VWAP, playing ping pong. Dude, mm -hmm. it's an uptrender. You better fucking expect if a pumper gets a hold of this, this is breaking highs. That's yep. all I have to say. I'm not hitting out our lines on shit like this. I'm not doing anything. If I wasn't giving the webinar, I probably would have, if I was at my home in front of my sub, I may have attacked this on a 2 p.m. reversal. That's mm -hmm. the only trade I would have taken on this, dude. Yeah, for me, the fact that it's an 800K float and you got that dude on YouTube that's got like 10,000 people watching, it becomes an obvious target for yeah, him yeah, yeah, to, yeah. to solicit to the sheep. And then it becomes an, what do you call it? Unnatural price, what do you say? Unnatural yeah, an price move. action? It's, Artifi it's, an, it's an artificial move, there you go. And so, yeah, it's, uh, oh, sorry. For the people asking about our VWAP explanation that we do, um, just this recap, this Q and A will be on the YouTube channel uh, once we're done. So just go watch it. Yeah, Tay, inorganic. Tay is like a thesaurus, bro. Have you ever noticed that? Like, if there's a word that you're searching for, she fucking knows what it is. Like, she just well, knows. Well, it, Mama has like, had some more life experience. She got that office. Mama insight, man. I'm telling you, it's like she just knows what we're trying to say. I'm telling. I'm like, you. I'll I'll be like, hey, you know, I'm trying to say this, and she's like, da da da, and I'm like how how did you even know that that's what i'm trying to say <laughs> she knows bro Jay, knows. we didn't say old we said experienced yeah we never said that go back to mtp said yesterday old. wasn't mtp the runner yesterday oh yeah but really quick the one thing oh, i go ahead to yeah, yeah yeah is even if you did place M mxc today outer lines they worked again you could have gotten a nice move there now i didn't because again I'm not going to be like a hindsight fucking guru where I'm like, dude, I've nailed the shit out of this and all the other. Right. You don't like these uptrending VWAPs and they're opening on VWAP. I know that if a pumper gets a hold of this, dude, this is going to whip through pre-market highs. Yep. But again, look at the morning move, dude. So the guy that was asking, sorry, the guy that was asking about stop losses yes. and the chance of not getting stopped out, zoom in at that market open. Sure thing, brother. Right that, here. You want me to go closer? Here. Yeah, closer, yeah. So do you see how right here it closed at 11.30? And I know this is probably because it's a halt, but the fact that it opens at 12, that is where this, you would not stop out. Even if it was a market stop, the right. market maker would not stop you out until it came back down to here. So, I mean, you would have shat bricks all the way up to 13 until it slammed back down within the guidelines of the market maker situation. So if that dude's still watching the YouTube, there's your example, real life example of maybe not being able to get stopped out. Joe, that is, that's about the best example you could have given right there, bro, for that. Right. You are not getting stopped out right here. Unless yeah, you're not getting stopped out until gets it gets back, back within your range. You're stopping out up here, bro. <laughs> yep. Because once it opens here, I don't know how this candle played out. I don't know if it went up first, down first, sideways first, circled first. I don't know what it did. Uh, <laughs> but if it just opens at 12 and jams straight to 13 and your stop was like 1130 and it didn't stop you out right here. And as soon as it opens right here, your stop's triggered, but it just jams up. That's the difference where your stop is not going to trigger because it's too far away now. And the market makers reserve the right to reject orders like that. And it's to protect against market manipulation, but it never fucking works. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it doesn't work that oh, way. No, it never works that back. way. Yeah, it never works that way. But I can say with 100% certainty, I would have not touched MXC had I traded a small cap and had it been the thing. For one, Alex mentioned it was a hot chick of the day. So I'm immediately not going to touch it because that's just not my thing. I don't like that. Number two, uh, this is the number one reason, to be honest with you, outside of Alex's commentary on it. The number one reason for me is that float. The moment I saw that float, I don't care if it's the absolute sexiest chart pattern in the world. I'm not touching it yep. because of those mother on streaming that will jam it yes. intentionally just to manipulate it. And yet, fucking sec does nothing and just watches these swinging dicks 
<sighs> I'm not going to get into that. But SEC's just got popcorn and laughing. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I thought I, it's just they get away with it by hiding behind a disclaimer. Don't follow my trades. Finger on the buy. Finger on the buy. Finger, finger on the buy. On the, Everybody finger get on the buy. <laughs> Fingers on the buy. And I'm in. Like, there's no way to not follow that. Dude, that's like Joe having a big brisket cookout and saying, don't right. eat, but come on in. Don't yeah, eat. Don't, eat. don't touch in. anything on the table. But, <laughs> you know, if you do, I'm not going to, you know, I, I didn't suggest it. You know, bull but he fucking planned the shit. whole time that the whole neighborhood would show up and eat the brisket. Yeah. Especially Faye. <laughs> um what do you think of vwap on mxc at 1183 and would you see a convincing break vwap followed by a failed retest of vwap as a good sign of weakness so what you just described is like tosh's favorite pattern is a convincing break of vwap and a failed retest it's we call it something else but that right there is like is like tosh's favorite thing it's like it tries to make it new high of the day slams under VWAP and then there you go sorry this literally has a name so what this is guys if this is doing this and again man we're giving some golden nuggets we're gonna call the trick fuck sure part. this is called a premature move if you see something trying to break through VWAP and really try to go during this time frame of like uh, premature speculation two, premature speculation down <laughs> what's that joe I said premature speculation. <laughs> this, this is what's called a premature speculation. <laughs> so when, when this can't make it through, dude, and it gets stuffed, it almost has a 0% chance of coming back. Look at the unwind. Also, yeah, it's, I'll just give you guys a quick random tip. I'm not going to say this like it's definite, but if you guys want to do these pumper plays, pay attention to the second half of the day right now. That's going to mm-hmm. the same. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. Just saying. Avoid all this pumper shit. Wait. Preach. Preach. <laughs> Preach. So just watch for these spiky ejaculation premature. <laughs> all right. Premature MTP. speculations. <laughs> MTP is another one of those situations where Jesus. look at it during pre-market. I mean, this it this indicates potential trouble. Like all to, through that, look, just over, Yo, under, v like over, again, under, trending, over, under, over, under, it's going to happen. <laughs> like, it's just in MTP. I, it's just, <clears throat> I just wouldn't touch it because of the VWAP. But again, I, you know, I can't say that for a fact, because, you know, I can't say with certainty because I, I, I never, I didn't trade it. And so I can't really have a, I hate to have an opinion on something that I never traded and can't tell you what my emotions were in the moment. You yeah. Know? I mean, so, I yeah. mean, it's kind of hard for me to do that and be like, I would have never taken a loss. <laughs> no, I if I know me, I would have found a way to trade this motherfucker. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Yo, wait, let me dude, go, I'm let just going to be real with you. Dude, I would have found a way. I, I can't remember, Joe, but I think I traded this. Dude, I, I, I literally forget everything, man. I think I might have traded this. Hold on. Let me go back to yesterday. Did I trade this shit? Fuck, I can't even remember, bro. Hold on. I know I did something with it, I thought. Wait, can I just look myself up? Uh, what is it? Uh, how do I do this again? From <laughs> at I, T. Can Bradley. I just do a website of? Let me just type in. Yeah, there we go. Um, I know I, I, when I, the last chart I posted, I think, was this one. Let me scroll back. Like, how do I search tab? I... Just choose files. Click files instead of messages. Out of a bitch. Right there. Those are all of your files. Uh, it's Bradley now. There's your, your screenshots right about. there. And then. Would that be it? Wait, no. It looks like an entry. Oh, chart. it is. It is. So, guys, check this out. And I'm going to clue you in on a little thing here. Another little secret, man. Giving away too much. Little secrets. Um, again, I don't like shit like this. It's uptrending with VWAP. And it yep. opens at VWAP. Expect the pumpers to launch this. If the pumpers are listening right now, they are learning how to even be better. Dude, and this is a and this is a potential long edge too. Like if you Ooh. zoom in on that, if th- one of those patterns out there that one of them teach is like a pre market breakout. And Ooh. so if this is something that you want to look for, look for this shit like that's over under VWAP, and then when it breaks. When it breaks pre-market highs, look to long the dip, risking VWAP, sell the push. 
So, and see if that's something yep. that works. I don't know. So when it comes to tops, you know I like outer lines and tops because this did a premature speculation <laughs> into previous tops. Look and where there, I'm... there is that failed candle. Right there is that there. failed candle. Short the little baby push, and you get the follow through. See, unfortunately, I was just so in nail and bail mindset and not focused. I should have rode this, dude. I should have. I mean, it, smart decision, though. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like smart bail. call. I, I <laughs> see. This is one of those things where it's like, you know, I can't tell you what I would have done in the moment. Well, Tosh, this is what Tosh did in the moment yeah. and, you know, had no faith in this being an actual like washout and having any kind of follow through to the downside, which dude, I don't blame you. After seeing yeah, dude, something go from three quick. to seven, I don't think it's going to turn around immediately. You know what it could have easily done? Yeah. It could have easily found support right here, faked me out, and then it's right back up here. Dude, serious. And that's the thing, Joe. When this candle happened, I literally was like kicking myself like, well, fuck. <laughs> and then I was like, well, should I hit right here? And I was like, you know what, dude? I, I'm, I, I'm just going to chill, man. So again, yep. sometimes I attack them hard. Sometimes I don't. But that's a smart call, though. Just to that's kind a, of that's show you guys of a what the, trader. Yeah, just to show you what the discipline and the, and the thought process was. But again, guys, again, keep it simple as, look, dude, uptrending pre-market. It is playing ping pong. It's coming through. It's going down. It's coming through. Yep. And it opens on VWAP. I if this am, is how it looks, yep. you wait for the death line. Dude, That's dude, it. That's the only for, fucking shit. That's or, the only setup. That's or, it. Wait for this. Wait for Or you long years. that hoe. Long that hoe. Yeah, yeah serious, dude. I'm <laughs> telling you, man. I mean, I'm not saying don't trade it. Find a way to trade it. There's some edge there, obviously. It's just not for me. Joe, the uh, fact that we yeah. have longed all the stocks that we warned about just shows how idiotic we are. Right. But look at SNDE. Look at SNDE. Fucking hugs VWAP the entire time. And the easiest short, the easiest short is waiting for it to tank under VWAP. Wait for the death line. Sorry, man. I'm sorry. Tank under the death line. Yeah, that or you can do what yeah. I do, which is. Or if it does that setup right there. Yeah, beautiful. Because this is what I do. You know, I will short in these pushes, but I will absolutely risk the top mm -hmm. of the quick. No exceptions. If it breaks, I'm out. Yep. <laughs> Damn, Joe, we need to charge like a thousand dollars for this <laughs> webinar, dude. This is like an accelerator <laughs> course times two. Is how to use VWAP. How to use VWAP, bro? Seriously. That uh, looks like the market's having a little bit of a rebound here. So oh, we'll it? see. We'll see if this. We'll see if my cues work out. So the spy's looking nice. Bro, um, I don't know why I closed this, uh, dude. Tell me, like, what the hell is up with spy, man? Does it, does it know what's happening in the world? Dude, I, Austin said it like a couple weeks ago in one of his webinars, and he was like, dude, I think the market is just going to fake it till we make it. And I couldn't agree more. I, I could not agree more. That's not to say that the cues are going to go right along with it. So that's why the, the puts that I have are, are 260 strike. So like down here, like I just want to see us lose – this move like i just no, think I just it's want to see the american economy <laughs> <laughs> I, like, american bastard yeah i know right um it's just like i i just see a potential short here but i mean the the, the cues are not just going to fade off with the spy being super strong uh so i have uh some long positions against the q short so i'm kind of like i'm hedged within that so if i lose on the q short i'm gonna make like twice as much on the long side and if i oh. if the cues die then i'm gonna be basically break even on some of my long positions uh and so it's like okay i'm just i'm i'm just playing with house's money at that point i didn't open like all those trades today it's just kind of how it forms because in august my son has to start virtual school. No. Um, <clears throat> so it's his first year of school, going to be virtual. I mean, what a fucking awful time to start school, right? Dude, it's his first year of school in like- Like that's what a kid loves is to go to school, right? Oh. In the beginning, that's like your favorite thing is going to school, making friends, like all kinds of shit. And now, nope, thank you, COVID. We're fucking stuck at home. <sighs> Over this shit. Nobody in the U.S. will wear a damn mask. It's an infringement on my rights as an American. <laughs> Fucking. 
Joe, you need to do voiceover work or something, dude. You got know, a I side guess. hustle, bro? You got an impression? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? I don't know. I don't think Comedy I'd nights at the freaking the pig and whistle with Joe Kelly. <laughs> dude, it's just, you know, it's like, why? Why? Like, my father in law won't wear a mask. And I'm like, why not? Because he's a Frenchman on my rights. This is all a conspiracy. It's all a conspiracy. We don't want to fa- I mean, the COVID is, a, is all fake. It's all government. Dude, it, okay, it, well, it, then if it is, go out and catch it. And if you don't, you know, go from there. I'll tell you what, if you highly believe in that theory, then go test it for yourself. Yeah, go to one of those stupid fucking COVID parties. Like, yeah, whatever COVID. those are. Dude, I mean, it, it, it's crazy to me, bro, that like there's so much circumstantial evidence that things like climate change or, or like coronavirus and people dispute it. And like, look, again, I'm not, I, dude, I'm a not, I, I don't want to rock the boat of people's beliefs. Like, look, man, if you don't believe in climate change, whatever, I'm not going to fight you on I will rock that fucking boat. I'm not afraid of it. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm just like, dude, how could you not see the side, the writing on the wall, red rum? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you guys make it seem so easy and obvious and it all makes so much sense. But when in the trade, it seems so chaotic. How do I keep the same insight and clarity as you do? Trade for seven years, Skay. <laughs> yeah, repetition, man. Repetition. repetition. Just, just screen time, pal. So yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's repetition and it's writing down, you know, rules and seeing the, and seeing the repeatable outcomes. Yes. Um, and you have to not trade in those moments. Like you have to like sit on your hands, make a decision, write out, write out your decision and watch it play out in front of you and then start to trade with small size. Yeah. I mean, Skate, look, you saw my MTP chart, bro. I waited the entire day to mm-hmm. enter. Like that's just what it takes sometimes, you know? Again, the entire day until you feel like you've got a feel for what's happening. Bro, you ain't going to be LeBron the first day you go on the basketball court, man. Not for even real. two years. Like mm-hmm. this stuff comes in time, man. It comes in time, but we're going to teach you the right way how to trade. So that's the whole so thing about MIC. It, another thing here is you make it seem so obvious and easy Yes, it is obvious and easy once you, like Nick said, practice makes perfect. Watching this one time and then not doing anything after this to put these methods into action is piss poor planning, right? So how many years? And what is it? Piss poor like, planning. Yeah. Prior planning prevents piss poor performance. And so, I mean, if you don't do any prior, or let's say you make one like, you're like, all right, I'm not, I'm gonna pay attention to VWAP from now on. And you look at it and then you're like, all right, well, I paid attention to it. What do I do now? Like that's <laughs> fucking piss poor planning right there. It's not you gonna have work, to bro. repeat and it, it. And it's not going to work because of this. What was it? L O B L G. Cause here's the thing, dude, you're good. Cause you, because you don't have enough experience, you're going to be like, all right, I shorted it VWAP like Joe and Tosh said, Oh shit, I can't handle up to here. I'm out. Well, no, right. dude, there's also, or you're too greedy and you don't cover. Yeah, you got to yeah. cut. Like, there's there's so much to this. It's not just because you get in here, you can fucking go relax the rest of the day and pop a cola. It's like, dude, you got to cover and then see how it's holding, see what the volume's doing, see yep. what level it can actually get to, and especially if a pumper's involved, dude. Like, there's so many factors, but we cover all this at MIC. And as Faye says, to quote infamous Faye, you know, watch the fucking thing, dude. <laughs> like, dude, we're discounting the accelerated course so heavily today that if you don't text me, I'm going to be really disappointed to ask about the deals. <laughs> Cause bro, seriously, this is all you need to start. I'm telling yep. you, screenshot my number, text me by the end of the day today, whenever, and I'm going to give this to you for a reasonable price. And you're going to learn everything you need. If you got anything out of this webinar today and you do, and are, aren't curious about this eight hour course, dude, it's just good luck to you, man. Good luck. I don't know how long it's going to take. Again, tough love, but damn. I'm looking at AG right now. Ticker. AG. AG. Let's see what dad doing. It's fucking silver. What's going on with silver? Can somebody Dude, enlighten me on what's happening are, with silver? Bro, commodities are skyrocketing, bro. Yeah. Gold silver, man. Gold's about to hit an all-time high. Are we are we thinking that the US dollar is gonna go to shit like 
in and everybody all of a sudden is moving to gold and silver or Apparently, something. Apparently, bro, I, fiat I, currency is going to the wayside. Even Robert right. Kiyosaki, those big real estate dudes, are like, dude, they're even they're even vouching for cryptocurrency these days. I'm like, oh my god, eh, that's a stretch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know if I can get on that bandwagon. Yeah, just, yeah, look at I'm not Nugget, that progressive dude. of a thinker. Unbelievable, man. Look at fucking Nugget, dude. I remember when this was trading like 22. You remember when it was trading at 200? No, it was never 200. All these damn reverse splits. Seriously, man. Oh, I remember when it was trading at 722. <laughs> 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 just like I remember when Tries was trading at 1 trillion. <laughs> right. What is that? 3.4 million? Oh, my Actually, God. Literally, what is that? Hold on. How many zeros? My I said that. One, two, three, four, five. So th- 3 million, 400,000. Wow. Dude, one share could have made you a millionaire. <laughs> Jesus uh, Christ. Nah, man. For, I, I mean, wonder how many like, fractional shares I could purchase on Robin Hood. On acorns. Oh, for, for those who aren't familiar, me and Joe are being <clears throat> sarcastic. When a stock is saying it went to like 5 billion, it's had a reverse split. It was never. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's not a skewed, there. It's a skewed reality. Uh, OBLG. Yeah, yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of eyeing AG here. I don't know what I want to do, though. Oh, AG. That's right. I forgot. Uh, Silver, what are you what are you thinking about, long or short? I wouldn't. Short I'm thinking short. long. And yeah, I was gonna say I wouldn't short such strength, bro. These things Mm-mm. these things are really holding up, man. Yeah, no, I'm not thinking about long, or I'm not thinking about shorting it. I like I I, I like the recipe that it kind of has, except ah, no, I can't long that. Nope, nope, I can't long it. Never mind, I'm not what long. What your it. deal breaker? Mm, daily chart. Oh, let's take a look. Multi day run. Ah, that it is. That it is. If today was the first day, like I would, I would be, I would be good with it. Well, it's just but. like Al's teachings on the three day rule, man. It's like, mm-hmm. look, the, the, the law, guys, just for general terminology or psychology of the stock, rather, is the further into the move as a, as a, as per days that it's running, the less mm-hmm. chance you have is a long edge. So shorts have the longs have the edge day one on all these small caps. And even, you know, just a main mover in general, because sell-offs have to happen or tanks or reversals, you know, trend breaks. But day one really is technically for long sides. Day Mm -hmm. two is way less of a long edge. I mean, there are still long options, but it's still way less. Day three, dude, if you're longing on day three, just don't be a trader anymore. Yeah. Like, seriously, I swear to God, I'm not kidding. Like, I hate to be harsh but blunt, but dude, it's true. That is the fundamental stupid ass, like, the number one thing, the rule you can't break. Like, yep. don't ever long on a day three of a run. Yeah, if if this if this run was happening like on day one, I would be like this. Uh, yeah, yeah. I would be all about. I'd be all about grabbing some because like it that meets, would look good for us. It yeah. meets all my criteria now for this type of trade, but eh, it's day three, so nope. It's just it's day Pass. three, and it's, yeah, it's it's this could gap down huge tomorrow for all we know, mm-hmm. right? Again, this is more commodity base rather than small cap and or like hey we got a electric car wait no we don't this is a little bit different but i still again like we're so it's impregnated in our minds of what to do on a psychological level when it comes to price action this is just no go for a long it just i i don't know what's going on with silver that's like there was another etf that was like gapping up crazy today and i can't I was can't it, remember what ticker it was. Was it gold, Joe? Was it JNUG? Was it Dust? No, it was okay. it was some ETF I'd never heard of. Let me see. Hang on. I've got it in my DMs. Somebody some real estate it. ETF or something? <laughs> it was like, it had crappy volume, but it was like, it was a crazy gap up. Let me see here. Uh, AGQ. That's it. AGQ. Let's take a look. A G Q. Oh wow. Yeah, from like thirty-four to forty-five. So I guess it's just that's an invert. Is that an in, is that the ETF of AG? That's what it sounds like. It's yeah, a, it's, a, it's a two. Yep. So, but again, <clears throat> I don't know why silver is running. Wow. That's really the thesis. The really what I'm talking about here. I don't know the 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 catalyst behind that. That's like a huge so, run too. Yeah, it's a big run. I and I can't find what it and again, I haven't looked. 
I haven't really dug. It didn't really stick out to me. So I, I don't know. This is more Joe's bread and butter, man. I, again, I only like day one and twos. This, he, he likes these kind of things, but. Uh, That's about all I got, man. Yeah, same, man. You guys any got, got any closing questions? Man, we've been going hard. Tesla earnings after hours, so folks stick around. Know some uh, people who <laughs> be playing that, and Get your popcorn ready. Yeah, I'm not touching it. <laughs> no way in hell. Touching that. That's a big-ass gamble. So something like PLSK uh, could be considered a day one long. Let's take a look. That's not day one, brother. This, like, where's day one, right? Like, this could have been day one yesterday. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's not day one today. Again, so, so a real good indication of day one is something like OBLG. It was doing nothing. It was doing nothing. It was like a, like a sand pit. And then boom, dude, a sandcastle's built. Like it's up in after hours, it's up in pre. This is like your quintessential, like, hey, now there's a new catalyst. It's on people's radars. What's going on with this stock? Like, why are people talking about it? Why is it up? It's up because of a reason. See what I'm saying? Yep. Good, a good, if, if you're like somebody that, you know, you need like strict rules to follow to be able to like identify whether it's a day one or a day two or whatever it is. Um, for me personally, uh, the metric I would use would be if the prior day was up around 10% and it did, you know, three to 5 million volume. And then the next day doing whatever it is, um, that's your metric is you have to look at it and know um, the prior day was not a run right? The prior day was like, it was just flat. It was like nothing, nothing happened. Like MXC, <laughs> like MXC, look at the prior day volume, 982,000, like no volume, look at this. no attention. And then boom. dude, it was like somebody loaded, like some, some pumper loaded it and then it just went boom. Dude, could and you then imagine? they push out a press release. Yo, imagine, imagine being able to turn back time one day. <laughs> Oh, it'd be fucking glorious. Oh, rich would we be? We'd be the first trillionaires, dude. I would have bought a million fucking shares yesterday. Oh, shit. No, you know what you do? I'll tell you what you do if you, if you could turn back time for a day. It's not longing a million shares of something like this the day before. It's finding every single stock and doing what? Under like a certain threshold that you don't have to report to the sec and then actually go into sec filings and you just nail like a yep. hundred ticker. Yep. <laughs> Silently. Yeah. Fuck a million shares in this dude. I'm going to find 20 charts that look like this and go in 50,000. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Let me just be able to turn back time for one day. Dude, for real. I'll make Jeff Bezos look like a poor man. What was that ticker they ran recently? It was like 500% or some crazy shit like that. I don't know. I don't remember what it was. Oh, was dude, it? I, I heard, listen to this. Joe. Was it SRNE that did that crazy run? I can't remember, dude. I can't remember. It's so fucking many of them that did it. Dude, I, uh, I heard an analytic or I read something in the last couple of days, bro, that said Jeff Bezos, listen to this, man. This is how rich this fucking guy is. Jeff Bezos can purchase 1,300 Lamborghini Aventadors in one day and still have 15 million left over every day. Oh, my God. I'm like, dude, most people will never see wow. a Porsche in their lifetime. This fucking guy can get, like, literally 2 billion Ferraris and Lambos in one day and still have money left over. I'm like, that is just, like, what kind of karma do you have to have to beat him in this lifetime? Who's... <laughs> Do I have to, you know, to get that? <laughs> well, you did a little bit of it to get MIC, but damn. It's the <laughs> right, yeah. Oh, man, this is a – bro, this is probably one of the funnest webinars we've actually ever given. Always. Good shit. Dude, good shit every week, man. Guys, thank you so much for coming, man. I think we'll probably wrap it up here. Go enjoy your nights with your family, man. Um, hopefully you guys learned something. All you new guys, if you don't text me, then dude, I, I, I'm losing faith, man. We just dropped some serious knowledge on you today. We're discounting the course heavily. Uh, I'll, I'll post it right here so you can uh, see it. Uh, or actually, I'll post it right here so you can really see it. 
actually, fuck it. I'll just bring up the <laughs> um, two, one, three, four, five. I'm, I'm like, dude, I'll draw it. I'll type I'll post it, it right here. No, I'm not. I'm going to post it right. No, I'm not. I'm going to no, put I got it. it. I'm already just bring the slide. Where's the slide? Guys, hit me up. <laughs> yeah, hit me up, guys. Uh, we'll take care of you. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. Seriously, I know there's a lot of familiar faces in here. I love seeing you guys. Uh, Joe, you're awesome. Dude, go enjoy the wife, man. If you don't, you got Faye as a backup, brother. <laughs> All right, man. We'll see you later. (laughs) See you, buddy. See you guys.